ladies and gentlemen, you're in for quite the treat because some of you are coming into this with zero charting and trading view experience. And maybe some of you are coming in with a moderate level of experience and are looking for a gold standard charting setup. But whatever stage you're currently at right now, I'm gonna take you from there and turn you into a full blown trading view professional, as well as know all the tips and tricks that have taken me thousands of hours of full-time trading to discover. I also went ahead and put timestamps below so that if you're looking for something specific, you can go ahead and skip ahead to that section. But I recommend staying to the end because I'm gonna be showing you custom indicators and how to use them on your fully complete trading view setup to be able to pull profits out of the market. So if that sounds good, make sure you hit the like button on this video, subscribe to the channel if you're new and you like day trading and investing. But without further ado, let's set up our gold standard trading view setup. All right, so here's exactly what we're gonna be getting into. So first we're gonna go over a general layout. So color theme, chart style, full customization of your trading view. Then we're gonna do a complete features overview. So I'm gonna show you all of the trading view features and how to use them when you're trading. Then we're gonna get into creating an organized trading workflow. So when you're trading, you need to maintain organization. The last thing you need to be thinking about is, oh, where was that trade? Where was that technical analysis that I drew? I have a full process that organizes everything to make it completely easy. I'm gonna show you exactly how we do that. And then we're gonna get into the custom indicators that our community has designed for you to be able to fully dominate trade in the market. All right, so let's get into our general layout. So when you hop into trading view, this is what you're going to be hit with. This nasty white background, green and red candles that look awful. First thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to go to these dots right here, go to your color theme and change this to dark. There's a huge polarizing debate about this in our community. So let me know in the comments. I'm gonna to try to settle this once and for all. Is the light or the dark layout the move? Okay, I'm always gonna vote dark layout every single time, but I wanna to get to the bottom of this so we can end it and move on. Dark layout for the win. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do. Easier on the eyes and that is how I set up my chart. So this is our standard setup. Now we're gonna get into customizing our chart. So I'm gonna right click on this and go down to my settings. This is going to give me all of the settings for making the chart exactly how I want. All right, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to check this bid and ask box. That's gonna show me where the buyers are and where the sellers are. It's always important to see that information. So I'm gonna add that there. Then if we click up here on symbols, this is going to show us our candlesticks and the corresponding colors. Now, before I get into candlesticks, we can change the type of chart that we're looking at. This is the most common way of analyzing charts. We also have these bars. We have hollow candles. Then of course we have line graphs. Okay, if you wanna look at your graph in any other way, you can click up here and you can select how you'd like to view it. Okay, candles are always gonna be the gold standard. This is gonna show us the open, the close, the high and the low. And then with the red candles, this is the open, close, high and low. Okay, easy way of looking at your price graphs. We have tons of videos explaining all this in depth. I'm not gonna go there today, but we're gonna go back in and we're going to customize our candles. So what I like to do for my chart, I'm gonna switch all of this to white here. And then I'm gonna change all of this to this custom orange look here. Okay, if at the end of this, you enjoy my chart layout, in the description, I'm gonna be sharing this entire thing with you. So you can literally pull that into trading view and then customize it how you like after that. What I'm gonna do on this one is I'm gonna turn the opacity down to zero so that my white up candles are thinner and my down candles are these solid orange candles here. Then what I'm gonna do is check this bid and ask box again. That's gonna show you the buy side and the sell side on the chart. So you're always gonna know where the buyers and sellers are. All right, next thing that I'm gonna do is click on this canvas button here. And this is where you can control all of your background settings. So when I'm trading, what I really wanna focus on is the price structure. And when I start to see these grids that are really, really dense, it starts to take away from the market structure and I start looking at these levels here. So when I'm trading, the horizontal lines are a lot more important to me. So I'm gonna turn the opacity all the way down to one on my verticals and then all the way down to three on my horizontals. Also, what I like to do is check this watermark here. So now we can see which pair we're trading across our chart. But once again, I'm going to turn this down basically so that it's almost see-through. So it's not distracting, but we have everything set there. So this is starting to look more like my chart setup. What you then want to do just to save this the way it is. Once again, you can right click on here, hit settings, go into templates here and hit save as, and then you can just call it day trading one, for example, save it, hit okay. And now you're going to be able to populate this chart regardless of what you do. And this is going to be a gold standard for you moving forward. Next, we're going to look at how to look at multiple charts at one time. So if I click on this box here, 
It's going to give me a wide array of all these different options. So I can go ahead and click in here. That's going to give me one big chart and two smaller charts on the side. If I want to select something like this, we can get crazy and have a bunch of charts on our screen. Primarily what I'm doing is looking at one chart at a time, but say for example, you wanted to have this view. This is also a good view. All right, what we want to do is click on this and now we can look at syncing all of these charts. If I toggle on symbol, that means that if I switch symbols in this box, it's also going to correspondingly switch symbols in all of these boxes. If I uncheck this and I want to look at Cardano over in this box, now only this box is showing Cardano, but the rest of these are going to be sunk in VeChain. Same thing with everything over here. So if we want to do time frame, we can check that box, date range, same thing. Okay. And so on and so forth. Also quick tip for you guys here. Whenever you switch pairs, it's going to stretch out your charts like this. All you have to do is double click on the right side vertical axis, and it's going to squish the chart down. So if say, for example, your chart looks like this, all you have to do is double click and it's going to bring it back down to normal. All right. Next thing that I want to talk about is chart frequency. So we're going to click on this menu right here. Anytime we want to add a frequency that we commonly look at, all we have to do is star that that's going to add it to our menu up here. So if we unstar all of these, now we're not going to have any of those up there. We restar them and they're up there. Good to go. All right. Another cool thing is if I want to switch to a five minute frequency, all I have to do is type in the number five on my keyboard, hit enter, and that's going to automatically flip me. If I want to do a 30 minute frequency, I can type in 30 in the keyboard and that is going to switch me to that frequency automatically. Okay. Another cool feature is duplicating tabs. Say I wanted to open up a different chart on a different monitor. For example, I have two monitors. I can do one of two things. I can either click this as a new tab, select the chart layout that I want. So if I select this one, it's going to populate this preset and I can either click on this and pull the window out to create a new tab and move it off to a different monitor. Or I can go up to this menu right here, click on this, and that's going to automatically populate the same exact thing, but in in a separate window. So now that we have our chart set up properly, I want to go over all of the tools and features that TradingView has to offer. Okay. So over here on this column, this is going to be your drawing panel where we have all of our indicators in drawings that are going to be on charts. If we want to put a trend line, we have a trend line there. Here's where all of our Fibonacci's are. Okay. We're going to learn how to use these in just a second. Say we want our Elliott wave tools. We have them over there, our paintbrush and etc. You get the point. Okay. Over on this right side right here is where we're going to manage all of our alerts, our watch list, any economic news coming up, our trading panel, if we're trading on TradingView and something called an object tree, which is my favorite thing about TradingView. So I'm going to open up my watch list over here. We're going to get into watch lists a little bit later. Okay. This is where we can manage all of our alerts. So if we want to manage our alerts or see the alerts that have been alerted, we can check that box over here. Okay. This box is going to show us information about the current pair that we're looking at. These are screeners. I don't really use those. This is the economic calendar. So if you want to click on this economic calendar right here, we can look at events that are going to impact the movement of the market. And you can use those to find volatility to trade the markets in, which is pretty cool. And here is my favorite part about trading view. It's this little feature over here called object tree. Okay. This is going to allow me to maintain crystal clear organization while I'm trading. Okay. But let's say I want to take another trade on V chain and I've drawn all of this technical analysis. Something really cool that I can do is I can click on this object. Okay. I can mute individual objects or I can click on this, hold down shift, click at the bottom of where I want to hide. I can highlight all of these, click on this folder here. We'll call this three, five, a short. Okay. I can condense this list down and mute this. All I have to do is toggle this on. And it's going to pop back up on my chart and I can always break this down and edit and modify things how I like. Just make sure you're hitting this save button periodically so that everything is saving for you. Okay. Up here is where we can access all of our indicators. We're going to get into this a little bit later in the video. Okay. And if you ever want to look something up quickly, we can use this icon up here. Say you wanted to look up head and shoulders. You can type that in over here and quickly access it with this search bar. Okay. Now I want to get into creating an organized trading workflow. And the way we're going to do this is by using flags and using watch list sections to organize all the pairs that we're watching. Okay. So over here is going to be my watch list section. All right. Anytime I want to create a new watch list, you can click on this area here, click create new list, call it whatever you want. Then all you need to do is click on this over here. And now you can type up essentially anything you want to look up. Okay. Something that's important to remember if you're trading on say Bybit, you can click on Bybit here and it's only going to show you 
you pairs that are present on Bybit. Then you just need to hit this plus button here to add all of your pairs. Once you exit it out, this list one is going to be all things that are going to correspond with the exchange you're trading on. So you can see I have one for Bybit, one for Bing X, and then I have this whole flag system that I also use. Okay, what I can do when I find a pair that I like is go over here and click whatever flag color I want to use. In this case, I'll choose green. Then if I go over into my green list, it's automatically going to populate this into this category. Okay, then what we can do is click on these dots over here, hit add section. That's going to add all of these bookmarks in your green tabs. So I have all the trading systems, whether I win or lost them in a section for the trades that are live. So for example, let's say I was live in this trade, I would move this up to a 35A open position. Okay, we'd let this play out. Okay, once it's moved to full profit, I can drag this down to 35A wins. And now I'm going to know exactly what the status is of all the pairs that I'm actively trading and that I traded for the last week. Over here on my red tabs, I have all of my traditional markets organized by sectors. So I have all the tech stocks here, consumer retail, banks, airlines, biotech, etc. in my red list. On my blue list, I have all of the large crypto pairs that I'm doing overall analysis on. Okay, that way when I'm day trading these individual pairs, I'm not sidestepping around all of the long-term technical analysis I'm doing on my daily chart and I can keep these in its own section. Okay, like I said, green list is my active trades and then you can do whatever you want with these other bookmarks. If you wanna quickly flip through pairs, just hit the space bar and I can automatically go sequentially down the list to be able to quickly take a look at overall market structure. Okay, it looks like Shiba is actually setting up for a CH1. So I'm gonna go ahead, flag this in real time, go over to my green list here, put Shiba, CH1 setup. Now I can go back and do all my technical analysis on here. That's just me showing you how this works in real time. Okay, so next let's get into some tools and indicators. So like I said, this is going to be my section over here. So my first section is going to show me all of my trend analysis. Okay, so if I wanna use a trend line here, I can click on that tool, click and drag, and that's going to allow me to draw trend lines along all of the price action on my charts. Now, a cool feature, and this is going to be applicable for all of the indicators, and I do use this, is this wheel over here where you can select from templates. You can see I have a regular trend line that's going to make it gray, and then I also have a trend break trend line. These are gonna be used for different functions when I'm doing technical analysis. Okay, if I wanna have different styles or different lines, I can save it as a template, and then anytime I draw it, I can quickly flip between those presets. So if I wanna do a regular trend line, boom, nice and easy to switch over. Okay, my favorites are this trend line tool here and then my parallel channel. Okay, this one makes it a lot easier so I can click and drag and then just click up again and click again. And now I have full parallel channels for me to use for trading decisions. Once again, I have both of these starred on my favorites panel. Next is going to be my Fibonacci section. So oftentimes I'm using my Fibonacci retracement tool. If you guys wanna know what my Fib presets are, these are the levels that I'm looking at. Okay, I'm also going to be using my trend-based Fib extension. So once again, I'm using this to find the top of trends. So I can click from my base to my high of wave one back down. And that showed me earlier today with this VeChain trade that that's going to be the exact top before the price moves down. So if you guys wanna see the custom settings on this projection, there they are. The next tools that I use are both of these in here. So my Elliott Wave 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and my Elliott Wave Correction ABC. Okay, so once again, if I select that, I can count my waves like that, clicking with five at the last one. That's gonna show me visuals of the waves that I'm looking at. Okay, my ABC, I'm starting at the high, boom boom, boom. And now I have my full Elliott wave pattern. Okay. Over here is what I use to calculate my risk reward on my positions. So if I want to take a long position where I'm buying, I can go ahead and select this tool over here. Say I want to buy in at this level. I can click there, put my take profit level up here, stop loss level here. It's going to show you all of my data over here. That's going to correspond on this level here. So anytime I'm typing in orders on my exchanges, okay, this red level is going to be my stop loss level. This gray level is going to be my entry in this blue level is going to be my take profit level. Same thing on the inverse. So if I want to take a short position like I did today, short in here, stop loss right here, take profit down here. Okay. It's going to show me all of the same data over here. I like to use the brush tool in case I want to draw things. It's just a nice tool to be able to draw. I like my rectangular tool here. Okay. What I'm really using this rectangular tool for is to find support and resistance levels. If I click from this high all the way over here, this is going to show me resistance, 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 etc. Nice 
circle tool to be able to accentuate certain points that you want to pay attention to. I always have a text call out in case I need to remind myself something by here. And now I can move this around and put it on my chart, which is a nice feature. Okay, this is kind of an interesting one that not a lot of people know about. But if I go over here and click on ghost feed, I can actually click and continue in a semi realistic looking way, a candlestick pattern moving forward so that I can either draw diagrams or anticipate in my own mind where I think these charts are going to go. Okay, and oftentimes I'm trying to use keyboard shortcuts. So if you click on your profile right here and go down to this menu and click on keyboard shortcuts, you can go ahead and look at each category, find the things you're commonly using and be able to punch them in on the keyboard. And this is going to help you speed up your workflow. So for example, with one of our systems called the TCL system, I need to quickly draw horizontal rays. So all I have to do is hold down Alt J and I can quickly draw as many of these lines as I want on my chart. Or if you hit Alt H, this is going to draw a horizontal line wherever your cursor is at. And this is just going to allow you to speed up your technical analysis process, especially when you need to be fast when you're day trading. All right, so now I want to go over all of the indicators that I use, how to put them on the chart, and finally a little taste of how to use the custom indicators that we have built on TradingView. Okay, so anytime you want to add an indicator to your chart, you can go up here and you're going to search from a wide library of custom indicators, native indicators from TradingView. So say, for example, I wanted to look up simple moving average. This is going to give me a whole list of simple moving averages and the amount of downloads that they have over here. All right, anytime you find an indicator that you like, you can go ahead and star them. And this is going to make sure that they pop up on your list. Now I'm going to run through all the indicators that I use, and I'm going to put all these in the description below so that you're going to be able to have full access to these through this video. So first indicator that I want to use is called the Inevitrade position size calculator. Say we wanted to buy right here, take profit up here, stop loss down here. We still have to figure out how many units we need to buy on the exchange side in order to take this trade. If I click on my indicator and go into a never trade position size calculator, you can see now I'm prompted to click for my entry price. So all I'm going to do is click at my exact entry price, click my take profit price and click my stop loss level. I'm going to input the dollar amount that I want to risk. So say I want to risk $1,000 hit enter. Okay, that's going to populate my entry, my stop loss and my take profit. The exact price is here as well as the profit I will take on this position. So it does all the math for you within several clicks and make sure that you're exactly precise when you're executing orders on your exchange. Okay, this is brand new, but I think it's incredibly cool. Okay, the next indicator is the Inevitrade Pro Plus. That's what we're looking at down here. But the primary reason I'm using this indicator is to find areas of overvalue and undervalue. This indicator uses cloud highlight RSIs, Bollinger Bands in here, and also has a strength versus Bitcoin indicator right here. So you can see anytime we're getting these highlight strips, it tends to be the temporary top or bottom of markets. So anytime I'm entering a position for confluence, I can wait to see if we're getting a highlight, okay, in this area, which we see right here. And then we're able to get short and have conviction that we're overvalued on our RSI. Now we can also use this to find something called hidden divergence. So if you notice, price action is at this level here, and here is where we get our cloud highlight. Now notice the price action over here is lower on the chart, but the cloud highlight is higher than this previous point. So we have an uptrend over here, but we have a downtrend on this price action. And anytime we're seeing those types of moves, we tend to get miraculous moves to the upside in the market. And we basically use this for added confluence on all of the trades that we're taking. Okay, like I said, we also have something called the strength versus Bitcoin at the top. So whenever this turns green, this individual cryptocurrency is stronger than Bitcoin. So it's outperforming the overall market. And whenever we're seeing areas of red in here, this is where the pair is underperforming and has a negative beta value to Bitcoin. And this can help us be selective on the pairs that we're choosing. Obviously, if we're shorting, we want to find weaker pairs. And if we're longing, we want to find pairs that are stronger than Bitcoin. All right, and a cool little tip, if you ever want to minimize all of the indicators that you have below here, you can double click on your chart. And that's going to hide all of the panes that you have on the top and bottom of your chart. If you want to expose them again, you can double click. All right, so if you ever add an indicator, say I click on that, and that's going to add my indicator down here. If I ever want to move the position of it, I can click this box here and click move existing pane above. Okay, once again, I can go in here, click these dots again, hit move to new pane above. And that's going to move it to the top of my chart. Once again, I can double click this and it's going to hide my indicator. So I can move indicators all around my chart just by doing that. If I ever want to get rid of them, I can go ahead and click on that. And that's going to get rid of it off my chart. Okay, the next indicator that I like to use is called the TC helper. So I can go ahead and click on that. This is going to give me a bunch of information. Now we use this for a system called the TCL system. This is something that we teach on the private side of our trading community. But basically, we can see where the New York stock open is going to happen. This is usually
usually an area of volatility when this market opens. We see where the London open also happens. Once again, a very volatile time to trade. And over here, we also have a 20, 50 and 200 day EMA. When all of these EMAs are lining up, this indicates strength in the market. And when all of these are crossed below each other, this indicates weakness in the market. And we use this to be able to follow trends when we're trading. Okay, we can look at this box up here. This indicator is going to show us the current state. So on a five minute frequency, we're looking bullish. If we flip to a 15 minute frequency, as indicated before, we're in a bearish state because we still have the 20 and the 50 underneath the 200. And we use this to follow temporary trends in the market. So hopefully with this information, you now have a clear picture of exactly how to set up your trading view to get the most out of it and have a productive organized trading session. Like I said, guys, if you like the indicators that we have and you want my trading view layout, I'm going to have all of that in a resource sheet in the description. So you can go ahead and add that chart, tweak it how you want and start playing around with all the indicators that we have to make the trading process easier. Okay, if you're still here, make sure you hit the like button on the video, subscribe to the channel if you like trading and investing. But that's basically all I have for today, guys. If you found this helpful, make sure you drop in the comment the most helpful thing that I mentioned in this video. But other than that, guys, until next time, I will see you all in the next video.